So, I mean, there are, there are lots of scenarios of, of how this species dominance debate can, can play out. And in some of them, you know, humanity escapes and the artifacts just come into being and disappear, they go somewhere else. But for me, the, the most probable scenario, the, the one I see as the most realistic, is in fact the worst, which, which is just horrible. And uh, because of the difficulty in learning how the brain works, and it will take decades, even, even with you know, nanotechnological nanotechno tools, I mean, you can imagine that nanotech will, uh, will be able to send zillions of robots into the brain. I mean, they're the size of molecules, right? So they could lodge themselves at virtually every synapse in, in the human brain and then broadcast information about that synapse, like where it is, how strong is it, and whatever. And all this information could be then collected in a, in a hypercomputer, which then models electronically uh, a human brain, all its connectivity. And we just map a human brain into a hypercomputer. So as, as these tools exist, come into being, uh, we'll know more and more about, about how the brain works. But, but we have to develop these tools. We have to, we have to get to nanotech. We, do, we, we don't have fully blown nanotech yet. We, we cannot position individual atoms as we want to, to, to make some atom scale device. You know, what, what is nanotech? It's essentially molecular scale engineering. We don't have that. We've got, we've got to develop that yet. So that probably won't come until, I don't know, it's hard to say, 20, 2020s maybe. I mean, there's progress every day, every week in the, in the journals, you know, science and nature and so on, the, the major journals in, in nanotech. But we still have a long way to go. We certainly have a long way to go to understand how the human brain works. So, so for me, the, you know, the most realistic scenario is that people, will, you know, humanity, will have lots of time, decades, to, to see this debate unfolding. Now, saying earlier that they took about a century or so for the American Civil War to, to heat up you know, this, this issue largely on slavery and, and whether states have the right to secede from the Union. Uh, the two major issues is the American Civil War. So I can see similarly uh, it will take decades for the Artelect War to, to heat up and, and to occur. And I see that as being realistic. It's, it's the most realistic scenario and there'll be lots of time for people to debate um, you know, there, there'll be time for political parties to be formed people you know, millions billions of them will see the writing on the wall they, they'll see their own machines becoming smarter and smarter and smarter and everyone will be asking the same question you know should we build them um, uh, you know new new crazy religion gets formed of you know, people wanting to create these these godlike creatures there's a whole universe out there and you know, th th there's lots of scope here for huge uh, discussion and, and argument and, and, in, and in time, bitter argument, as people become clearer and clearer on, on what the issues are. And uh, then you know, the political parties get formed, sabotages, the assassinations, the, 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 the artificial brain Building companies will have to defend themselves. Security will be much higher. Uh, the top researchers will get killed. They'll be assassinated. You know, the, the, the Terrans, you know, when, when push really comes to shove, I mean, the Terrans will just be ruthless. And that's, that's what scares me so much. So, uh, you know, I, I just, <laughs> I'm glad I'm alive now. I just don't want to see all. I mean I'll see the I'll see the early decades of it and see if I, if I can live to 90 uh, certainly in 30 years this whole issue will have developed a, you know, a hell of a lot further but I don't I don't think 30 years is enough time for the war because I think it will take longer than that to figure out how this works right? it's, 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 this is a major challenge it's, it's in a sense almost the last major challenge for, for science Figuring out how the brain works. What is what is consciousness? I mean, I don't. If you ask me, what is conscious? I don't even know how to begin to think about the problem. It's it's such a deep, mysterious concept. Now, but whatever it is, it uh, it, it it gets built, right? We know that because babies 
grow embryologically and those babies end up intelligent and conscious. So, so we know inherent in, in humans' DNA is the solution to how to build, you know, construct in molecular terms, how to build a, an intelligent conscious creature. So sooner or later, science will discover what that is and then be able to do it artificially. So we will have conscious machines. Right? So I, I see that as sort of obvious. It's just, just a question of time as, as, as our knowledge increases. But uh, given the vastly superior potential of, of these artifacts compared to us, it, it raises this enormous species dominance issue. Well, I'm, I'm more or less done on... on my sort of questions, and I know, I, know, I know you have some really interesting questions, and your fresh perspective, you, know, you, 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 you think of questions that I haven't thought of, so how about, how about we start on some of yours? There was one I had before, um, and we were talking about it, and we were talking about the friendly AI. Friendly that, AI. That, that, uh, is, we're trying to develop friendliness in AI now. But the Singularity Institute and the Foresight Institute are very aware of there being a problem of just um, having a, you know, pulling a mind out of mind design space, not knowing its configuration or how it will sort of uh, react to us or, or cooperate with us. So, do you think the Terrans will be as afraid of an artlet if it has been seeded in such a way that it is? That it has either guaranteed to be guaranteed to be friendly, or has a large percentage chance of being friendly. Will that if, change the debate? Yeah, I, I think it would. If now it's a big if, and I'm extremely sceptical. I, I, don't, I don't think it is possible to create friendly AI. Um, well, let me try to give my reasons. Actually, it's a pity I I, I wrote about this. I, I don't have it immediately, but uh, see if I can do it from memory. If it could be, let's say, mathematically proven, you know, in, that, in that sense of rigor, that uh, friendly AI is possible, then of course the Terrans would be much less terrified, because you know, it just destroys their average, it just pulls the rug from under their feet, if, if friendly AI is possible. But I'm extremely skeptical, for, for a whole string of reasons. Um, well, for a start, imagine if, if these artilects in their early days, the, the less intelligent ones compared to what they could be, if their level of intelligence is still inferior to human, then I can imagine because of human intelligence they could create structures and algorithms and whatever that the, the artilects would not be smart enough to undermine. Okay. But what, what worries me is, uh, imagine if I'm an artilect uh, of smarter intelligence than humans, and I look at this product, this, this whatever, that the humans have put into me, that the sense sense a part of me, that I'm looking at from other parts, and I say, God, how primitive. <laughs> so so I, just, I just get rid of it. Mm. Right? And, and because I'm smarter than the human beings, I'd probably be able to do that. And, and there's lots of other arguments. Uh, the, the nano... So these, these artlets presumably will be, at, le at, initially, at least initially, uh, nanotech-based. Right? They'll, be, they'll be quantum computers. They'll be topologi probably topological quantum computers. That will be their underlying technology. And we live in a world that it's full of cosmic rays. What are cosmic rays? They're just high-speed particles zapping through space, right? Through supernova explosion, kicking out you know, large numbers of particles. So the, our universe is just full of you know, cosmic rays. Just <laughs> so we create these artifacts, they're nano-based, and <laughs> gets zapped by a cosmic ray in some totally random, unpredictable way. Mutates. Changes, cha yeah, mutates the structure and hence the ethics, and, and we have no idea that how this very complex structure gets changed by, by these random mutations. We just couldn't, couldn't predict it. 
but there's then you know, then you get back into the terror and fear of you know, the risk that something like this could could go wrong. So you get these aberrant negative mutations where where the the so-called program friendly AI type structure programming algorithms, whatever, get zapped and changed. So you know, there's, there's another argument. Uh, the oops factor. You know, you know, the human beings think they got it right, but oops, <laughs> we made a mistake, right? And so I, I'm extremely skeptical. I don't, I don't think it's possible. I mean, put, put the problem, let's say, almost quasi mathematical terms. How would you prove that human beings at a, at a certain intelligence level creates these artifacts at a certain level in such a way that as the artifacts get smarter and smarter by self-modification, self-evolution or whatever, that they remain, critical word underlined, remain human friendly? I'm very skeptical that that can be done. I, I can imagine it can be done if the humans are smarter than, than the artifacts, you know, the early artifacts. I don't see how it can be done when, when it's reversed, when, when the machines are smarter. So you think like the machines may be able to become smart enough to... Undermine. Uh, re undermine. Yeah, they so just undermine it. Yeah, they just undermine it. Yeah, they just undermine it. Stupid. Yeah. They just throw it out. So they've got a utility so function which says be nice to humans and they no longer see that as being efficient. Well, if you, if, you, if you have evolutionary engineering and you have almost quasi-separate components and, and this one's sort of evolving away and being tested by this part, then you, know, you can imagine other parts outside being evolved, outside what the humans have programmed in, look, being looked at with, with a superior intelligence and found limiting and say, oh, I don't want, I don't want these human-level constraints on me. So... And, and uh, I, I just don't think the, the, the Terrans would risk it. Again, you know, this, this word keeps coming up, this, this basic concept in this whole debate, risk. I, I just don't think the Terrans would, would, would risk it. And, and what risk would, would they tolerate? So I'll give you a little argument here. Imagine, as a way of analogy, imagine, you know, you've, you've heard of Russian roulette, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's six shooters and you, you have one, one chance in six of whatever, blowing your brains out. But imagine someone gave you, you as one person, uh, a Russian roulette type deal where instead of being a six shooter, it's a hundred shooter. You know, this, this big barrel with a hundred holes for bullets, right? And only one bullet and 99 empty slots. And the game is... Uh, if you, you, know, you, you, you spin the barrel and 99 chances out of 100, you will not blow your brains out, but you will be given a million dollars. So you have one chance in 100 of dying and 99 chances out of 100 of getting a million dollars. A lot of people would take those odds, right? A lot. Okay? Now, if you're th th thinking now as a Terran politician, let's say a global, you know, global Terran politician. Now let's change the terms of the, the game a little. This time, if you hit the one in a hundred, you get the bullet, not only you die, but everyone in your street also dies. Okay. 